In this video, we are going to calculate value at risk in Python using the historical method, and we're going to do it in such a way that the code can be automated to use it for any type of portfolio for any time period and at any confidence interval. I hope you guys enjoy this video and it doesn't put you to sleep like my dog right over here. In order to calculate value at risk in Python, we're going to have to import the necessary libraries. I'm using six of them in this example all listed here. If you don't have any of these or one of them uh, installed on your computer, you're going to have to go into the command prompt and type pip install the library name that is PIP install. And then, for example, you would put NumPy. So let's go ahead and run that. And now we've got all six of our necessary libraries imported. Now, what we're going to be doing here is setting a time range for a certain number of years to help us in our analysis. We're going to be pulling data from Yahoo Finance on stocks for that period of time. Just to start off with, I'm going to start with uh, 15 years. So we'll set a variable called uh, years equal to 15. And then we're going to have to declare an end date based on today. And I can use that date time library that we declared up here as DT, um, date time as DT right here. And then we'll call a function from that library, date time dot now, which gives us today's date. And then we want to create a start date that's based on um, 15 years earlier. So we'll use end date and then we'll use another date time function. So we'll subtract um, DT dot time delta, which gives us a certain number of days. And so we'll set days equal to 365 days in a year multiplied by the number of years that we declared above. And let's run that. So we'll now have a date of today here and a date 15 years ago here. Let's create a list of tickers and we'll just call it tickers. And I'm going to start off with five as an example. And we got to use the square brackets to create that list. The first one, let's use SPY, which is the uh, largest S&P 500 ETF. Then next we'll use BND, which is the largest bond market ETF. Next we'll use GLD, which is the largest commodity based ETF, which tracks the price of gold. And then we'll use QQQ, which is the largest NASDAQ ETF, and then VTI, which is Vanguard's uh, all-world stock index. And let's run that. Okay, perfect. So now for each of these tickers, what we're going to do is download the daily adjusted close prices for all of them. And the reason we're using adjusted close prices rather than the normal close prices is because adjusted close prices count for dividends and stock splits. And our analysis will be more accurate if we incorporate those. So what we're going to be doing first is just creating an empty data frame called adjusted close DF. And we're going to set it equal to the pandas. So PD dot data frame. So we're declaring this data frame, but we haven't put anything in it yet. Now we're going to create a for loop to go through this whole list of each of these tickers. And we're going to grab the adjusted close prices for um, each date for all the tickers in that range. So here's our for loop for each ticker in tickers. We're going to get the data from Yahoo Finance and we're going to download that data based on that ticker symbol and then the start date and the end date that we declared above. And then once we have all the data, we're just gonna parse out the adjusted close value because that's all we need. Let's just print out um, the adjusted close DF just so that you guys can see for yourselves what it looks like. And let's run that. It should take a couple seconds because it's a bit of data to download. Okay, so we downloaded all five. And now starting from here is the data frame. So we just have each date for the last 15 years. And we've got the adjusted close price for every single one of these five ETFs for each date. Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the daily log returns and we're going to drop any NAs. So what I mean by daily log returns is if you think of a simple return, it would just be taking one day's price and divide it by the previous day's price and subtract one. That would give you the percentage change. But then if you take the log of that, it actually makes our lives easier on later on in the calculation because um, the log returns are additive. And if we do it on an annualized basis, log returns are um, easier to work with. So let's get the log returns and we'll put them in a variable called log returns and we'll set it equal to numpy or np.log. 
and then we're going to take adjusted close df and we're going to divide it by adjusted close df dot shift one and so what this shift one is doing is it's basically saying like let's say for example on this date the uh, april 29th of 2008 if we wanted to find the uh change in price or the percentage return we take this value we'll shift up one row so we'll divide by the row shifted up one above it right and then we're taking the log of that so that gives us our daily returns and what we need to do now is actually drop any na's so drop any na values and the reason we do that is because the first row wouldn't actually have anything to divide by so we need to get rid of any possible NAs because it can screw up the analysis later on. And then I'll also just go ahead and print this uh, log returns data frame so that you guys can see uh, what it looks like. So let's print that. And so we can see that for every single day for the entire time range, we have the percentage change in each of these ETFs price. And now that we've got our daily returns, we're actually surprisingly close to finished. So what we're going to do now is create an equally weighted portfolio. And what I mean by that is we're going to take each of our portfolio securities and put an equal amount of money into each one. So in this case, we'll put 20% into five securities. And so we'll say portfolio value is equal to, and in this example, let's just say our portfolio is worth a million dollars. Let's let's say we're pretty we're pretty rich. Then we'll set weights equal to. So we've set weights equal to, and um, it's going to be a NumPy array where we're just setting each value equal to one divided the length of tickers. And if you remember tickers, which we declared up here, is just five different uh, securities. So the length will be five. So each one will be 20%. So there we go. We have an uh, array with five different values of 20% each. And now we're going to calculate the historical portfolio returns based on an equally weighted portfolio with the daily returns of these values that we calculated here. Okay, so to calculate the historical returns, we need to create a new variable and we'll just call that historical returns and we'll set it equal to log returns multiplied by the weights. So we're basically just doing a weighted average of each security's log returns and the weight within that security. And then we're going to sum all of those. So just think of it as a uh, weighted average across the five securities. And then let's just print that out so I can show you guys what it actually looks like. So for each day, our portfolio had this uh, return, essentially, for the entire time range. And now that we have that information, we can do some stuff with it. So we're going to find the X day historical returns. And what I mean by X day here is just um, we're going to be able to specify any number of days. So let's just start off, for example, with days equal to five. And then let's write some code to get our returns for that five day period. Let's call that variable range returns. Okay, so here we've got our variable range returns and we're setting it equal to this historical returns here that we created above dot rolling and then we set the window equal to five days. So if we have or to we set it equal to days. So if days is five, then for example, on um, right here on May 5th or May 6th of 2008, its value would be the rolling average of these five uh, previous days, I believe. And then afterwards, we're going to drop any NAs from there because if we don't, it'll mess up our calculations later on. So I'm going to print that uh, out so you can see what it looks like. So just like I said, it's just taking a five-day rolling average of, uh, for each, each day. All right, now let's specify a confidence interval and calculate value at risk. So one important thing to note about value at risk is that it's always based on a certain time period. So we've measured our time period in days and a certain confidence interval. So we're asking what value is at risk based on this number of days and this level of significance. So we're gonna be thinking about it as a bell curve and the higher we set our confidence interval, the further we go out into the tail of that bell curve distribution. 
So the higher we set the confidence interval, the greater our value at risk is. And also the higher we set the days, the greater our value at risk is. So let's set our confidence interval. And I'm just going to use a pretty standard one at first, um, which is which is 0.95. Okay. So that's a 95% confidence interval. And now let's calculate VAR based on that confidence interval. So what we've done here is we've set value at risk equal to, so negative numpy np dot percentile, and we're taking the range of returns. So all of these returns for that entire 15 year period, and then we're going to look at, so what we have here is 100 minus the confidence interval times 100. So we're finding the uh, level of significance because the level of significance is equal to one minus the confidence interval. So if we have our confidence interval set at um, 95%, our level of significance is 5%. So we're looking at the fifth percentile outcome of everything in this entire range. And then we're gonna multiply that by portfolio value to give us that value in dollars. So this right here is returns. What would be our fifth percentile outcome in returns? And then we multiply it by portfolio value to bring it into cash. Now let's print that out to see what it is. So we're saying that in a five day period at a 95% level of confidence, the uh, about the worst, the thing that could happen at the worth fifth percentile is we'd lose about $27,500. Let's plot the results. I didn't want to waste your guys' time watching me type all this out, so I just put it in there. So here we go. So if we look at all the five day periods in that 15 year period of time for this portfolio, we could have had losses that span this entire distribution. But if we look at that fifth percentile, that lands right on this red line, okay? But if we change it, let's say to a 99% confidence interval and rerun everything, I'm gonna hit run all here. Now we're gonna see that red line push further to the left. So now that is further into the left of this tail. 